Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, actually also in Westboro. There are about 20 of us in Westboro. Uh, but this show is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you have seen any of my presentations at, at the uh, senior centers in the area or libraries, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means you're in Westboro, that means you want to stay right here. You don't want to go to San Diego to move, move with your kids. You don't even want to go to Marlboro where I live. You want to stay home. So the question on the show, before the show, or for the show is, who are the people you need to know? What are the programs you need to know about in order to be a senior here? And who are the people that you just be kind of interested in knowing, even if you don't absolutely have to know them, right? So Shelby Marshall, my co-host, who is known by just about everybody, I know even though she's so young, you know, she's even known by a lot of seniors, mm -hmm. um, is when my co-host <laughs> has been getting these great, wonderful guests, and she's got another wonderful person today. So Shelby, whom do we have today? Yeah, so good morning, Arthur. Great to see you again, as always. And um, welcome to our guests out there in in the hinterlands of Westboro. So very excited about today's guest. Um, Rini Hatherley is joining us, uh, like uh, like myself, I guess, but but uh, even better well known. Rini is not a stranger to Westboro. Um, she is a former principal, um, former uh, teacher, um, but she's on today in her capacity as president of the Westboro Women's Club. Um, I'm a proud member of that club. And um, it's when we think about um, connecting Frank and Mary uh, to others in the community, Westboro Women's Club is, is like this hot, cool club to be part of. And I know it might not include Frank, but if Frank's looking for, you know, Mary to go hang out with some friends, these are the ladies you want to do it with. So welcome, Rini. And it's so good It's because it's hot and cool at the same time. That is, yeah. that is, that is a real statement. That is <laughs> <laughs> well, Didn't you well, know I, I was saying that? I, I'm chuckling over here because I don't know that um, our group of ladies gets called hot and cool at the lot. same time. So well, I, being, can't, I can't wait to share it with them. Being that I'm, true confessions, I'm approaching menopause, right. I can relate to that very well. So maybe we are hot and cool, <laughs> <laughs> What Whatever, it sounds good to me. Right. Sounds good to me. So, Rini, um, not lukewarm. You're not <laughs> lukewarm. Hot and cold. It's like sweet and sour. You know, it's like. <laughs> so, Rini, um, you know, let's talk about some of the basics. So, what is the Westboro Women's Club? How long has it been around? Give us a little background, please. All right. I can uh, tell you a little bit about the history of the Westboro Women's Club. And I, I can tell you that um, when I joined, I didn't know as much as I do now about, about the history. But I believe that the Westboro Women's Club is actually the oldest civic organization in Westboro. Wow. And um, it, was, it was founded in, two, in 1916, 1916, and we celebrated our 100th anniversary back in 2016. And if you were at the 300th anniversary parade, you may have seen our float go by with the 100th anniversary um, symbols all, all there. Very, very, very proud. So we, we are not all 103 or 4 years old, but the organization is. And um, a, lo a lot of great things came from the Westboro Women's Club over the years. Um, it's changed. Um, because the town has taken over some of the functions of, of the club. But um, the Westboro Women's Club actually ran the first kinder, kindergarten class for the town from 1945 to 1976. So it was in 1976 that the town of Westboro took over the kindergarten education. Um, so we're, we're very, very proud of that. Um, some of the other organizations that were spawned by the Women's Club were the Westboro Players Club and also the 100th Town Chorus. So um, this club has been very active for a very long time, and uh, we, we are pretty proud of that. 
So, Reed, so I, I wonder okay, if they were, yeah. I wonder if they were founded specifically to lobby for suffrage because that was that, that's almost a hundred that's just a little over a hundred years from the adoption of the of the suffrage uh, amendment. Well, at the national level, definitely. That's and right. Yeah. What women's clubs across the country um, were being formed. Mm -hmm. So, Rini, bring us to present the, you know, one of the things that I think, honestly, um, until folks walk through the door of a women's club meeting, or now obviously things are being virtual, and we'll touch on that in a moment, but mm -hmm. um, I was really blown away at the level of organization and the dynamic nature of not, not just the meetings, but the work that the women's club does. So if you would, give Frank and Mary and their friends a sense of what is the club doing now? And, you know, really, this is your pitch to why do why do we want Mary to join the club? Well, you know, it's interesting because when I became the president, this is my third year as president. And uh, someday when we want to do another show, I can tell you how that happened. But um, it is so different now from the way it was when I first began. And I, it is an extremely well-organized machine. There, there is no question about it. Uh, we have um, many subcommittees. We have um, groups of people who work in different areas, a very active club, um, so that we involve as many of our members as we can in direct service to the club and to the community. We have community improvement. We have membership, we have a programs committee, outreach, publicity, fundraising. Um, we have our nominating committee, our scholarship committee, and every one of these committees has three to as many as seven or eight members on it, and they are all actively working. Um, we have an executive board of officers, um, which you know includes your usual president, vice president, secretaries, treasurers, and we also have directors. We have six directors who serve on the board, and this is really the um, main organizing body of the club. Um, we meet monthly, one week before the actual general meeting of the club. However, um, we do a lot more than just that one meeting. It, it, things are going on all month long just to get ready for the general meeting. And um, I, can, I can tell you that after I retired from many, many years working as an educator, I needed something to do. Um, I have more than filled that void. Um, that's another show. Um, however, the Women's Club played a huge role in that because I was really able to take things that I had learned as an educator, particularly as, as a principal, and apply them to the work I do with the, with the Women's Club. But um, the ladies on this club are amazing. Uh, we have people who have retired. We have some people who are still working um, at, at jobs every day. Um, however, the skills that they are able to bring are incredible. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of like the perfect storm. Um, if you want to be in an organization that is well run with a lot of great people that you will learn to love, uh, the women's club is the place to be. And I have to, I have to say that. So, um, and echo Rini's, um, words. Um, so I'm not an overly active member because of other commitments. It so happens that board of selectmen meets, um, on the same nights that, um, um, often the women's club are meeting, but what I love about the club is that efficiency and the friendliness of the club. Um, so it's a club where certainly like any club, it, you can become as involved as you want to be, but mm -hmm. every moment that you give to the club, I feel like is welcome. And you're not sort of like one of those, like, Oh God, I'm the member that's not showing up and I'm not, mm -hmm. you know, um, so for example, um, the club, um, recently um, or, or right around the holidays acknowledged all of their members um, by um, delivering to the members um, mm -hmm. little adorable homemade cookie trays mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, and so they reached out to all the members and said hey we need a couple people who can go around and be i forgot what they were called cookie angels or something like that <laughs> 
and and you know it's going to take you know uh you know an hour of your time we're going to give you whatever it was three five ten names go and drop them off on this day we mm -hmm. need that commitment and it was perfect for someone like myself who otherwise has like a bazillion things going on mm -hmm. but i felt like i could make that commitment and talk about organized there was my list i went bing bang boom done it, it was perfect um uh so sometimes i think clubs struggle to retain and attract new members because they don't have that level of organization. This is not the women's club. Uh, they are, they are great. And like I said, they're fun. And so speaking of fun, Rini, in non COVID times, right. You guys do, you have a number of events that, um, uh, are very well attended. One is the comedy night, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Ladies night out. And, and is that something that the club is anticipating in 2021 might occur? Um, I would say absolutely. Uh, we, we, we actually tried to figure out if there was anything that we could possibly do online um, this year. But we, that's one thing we just haven't been able to figure out. Um, that actually was not historically one of the fundraisers of the Women's Club. It was probably, I think we've had three ladies' night out to date. And they've been in March. And... It's just a great night. We we found some comedians who could put on a show for the ladies. Um, our Westboro Women's Club pretty much made all of the food and, you know, buffet style so that for the price of your ticket, you, you got food. Um, the KFC opened their bar, very reasonable uh, drinks if you wanted one. Um, and after we had our, our dinner, our potluck dinner, we had entertainment. And we have found that that has really interested people in the community. And that one event, I think, has attracted quite a few people to look into becoming members of the Women's Club. And it, it brings in some, some great funds that help to support the things that we do. And, and so to that end, Rini, what are some of the philanthropic causes? Um, this is the other thing I love about the uh, Women's Club is a variety of the causes that you support. It's not just one, but there there are several. Well, we, we are um, members of the GFWC of Massachusetts as well as Westboro Women's Club. And by being a member of GFWC of Massachusetts, we have 5013C status as a nonprofit. Um, at the Massachusetts state level, they have causes that, that they support. And we have in the past contributed to some of those causes. Um, recently, we have decided to try to keep our funds local and to support more that is closer to Westboro. Mm -hmm. um, we Obviously, we've been giving scholarships for many, many years. I think it was 1936 when the first high school scholarship was given. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, we give three to four scholarships to um, students at the high school after they complete their application. We support the Mass Star Leadership Conference by sending a high school sophomore. Um, this is also done in conjunction with the state. Um, we have supported, and I don't want to leave anybody out here, um, we, we just had, we, we have a different charity that we support every single month. Right. And um, the charity that we have supported in February is the, um, the farm, and I'm just, I don't want Community to... Community Harvest Project, right? Yes, I don't want to leave out anything, which is why I'm looking in my book. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, and, and while you're... Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. Well, and that's what I love because I think that, um, I mean, to me, civic organizations can take two paths, right? Like we're wholly committed and this is where all of our effort goes. Or we're going to kind of spread it across. Um, and, I, and personally, I think that um, a little bit of diversification allows everyone to benefit. And it also creates, you know, creates an interesting relationship with your members. For example, the Community Harvest Project, mm -hmm. which is in um, Grafton, the physical farms in Grafton, yeah. and I believe it's Harvard, um, also has created a volunteer opportunity. So uh, yes. Grayson and my daughter and I went, joined the Women's Club mm -hmm. uh, one sunny afternoon, 
or morning, I guess it was. Um, and we harvested vegetables at the mm -hmm. farm and mm -hmm. worked along. And, and it was such an amazing experience for our, my daughter. She still talks about it to this day. And, and she got to interact with, you know, women who aren't necessarily in my social circles, which is, mm -hmm. again, just this wonderful benefit um, of the Women's Club. Well, well and we're, we're hoping that that is actually going to expand. Um, Believe it or not, it's not that easy to get a date to provide that service to the right. Community Harvest Farm. They have a lot of uh, people who mm -hmm. go and support them. And our date has been on a pretty hot day in August, um, which has been a challenge to get people there. So I know um, Elaine Moore, our outreach chairman, is hoping that she can get us a date on a cooler day, um, you know, perhaps in, in June or perhaps in September. But we are looking to grow that and get more and more people to chip in and do it. It's very rewarding. Um, but, you know, some, some of the um, causes that, that we have supported are the Spectrum House. Um, we do have a, a chapter in Westboro. Um, we have supported the Veterans, Inc. in Worcester. We have sent um, donations of money and in-kind donations to Abby's house in Worcester. Um, we mentioned Community Harvest, uh, the Westboro Senior Center. We try to support them as well. And the Charlotte Spinney Vision Scholarship Program and um, the Westboro Food Pantry are, are some of the local causes that we, that we have been supporting. And one of the, uh, Arthur, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but if you're not, you want to be. One of the um, signature events that it's a fundraising event mm -hmm. for the Westboro Women's Club is the Holiday House Tour. And mm -hmm. um, it has grown in huge popularity. Um, uh, didn't happen this past year, sadly, again, COVID, but uh, it was... Um, um, right, Rini, am I, am I saying that right? We had to cancel this past year. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. It's like all the dates are uh, running together. But um, Rini, if you can just tell the community about about that event, if they're not familiar with it. Well, um, the Holiday House Tour is our biggest fundraiser, and it, it's really a shame that this year we were not able to do it. We brought in over six thousand um, dollars in in funds that we were able to use for the college, the high school um, scholarships through the Westboro House Tour the last time we did it. It's a wonderful event. Um, we find five people, five families, couples, whoever, um, who are willing to open their homes. Um, they generally decorate them for the holidays any way they would like. And we have these five houses, and they are on the tour. And people purchase a ticket, and they visit these homes um, and go in and just get, get to see some lovely, lovely homes in Westboro. All kinds of homes, old homes, new homes, um, farmhouses. We, we have had so many different types of homes um, that people have been able to get into. And I actually had my arm twisted about, I think it was probably five or six years ago, um, to have our house be on the house tour. And that really hooked me for Women's Club. I knew that I was ready to join the Women's Club after that house tour for many of the reasons that you've mentioned, Shelby. Yeah. Uh, the organization was incredible. I also accumulated more decorations for the holidays than I ever could have imagined. Um, I think I kept home goods in business all by myself. <laughs> And I thought I was going to have to rent a storage pod to put all of the uh, different things that I have accumulated. Oh, Jim must have been thrilled. Well, you know, he, he was a good sport about it. He supported me through the whole thing. And I, I know it, it was like old home week yeah. because we actually stayed here for a little while while people were coming through. Yeah. And uh, we did leave because generally the homeowners leave. Um, but it was, it was, it's wonderful. It's just a wonderful event. And we were so saddened not to be able to do it this year. Yeah. But this was not the year for people to be willing to open their homes. Right. And not the year for people thinking they would like to go into someone's right. home. Right. Um, right. 
So we're, we're just hoping we can get back to it. We're not sure if it will happen this next, this next December. But if not, I would say definitely by 2022. Well, you hopefully, know. hopefully we'll all be vaccinated yeah. and uh, yeah. we'll be able to have that. And, and one of the, right. the beautiful parts, Arthur, is that, um, I mean, there really is a, you know, it's sort of a little, this like, you know, tour, you get to see people, you're, you're obviously going to homes that maybe you've driven by before and said, boy, I would love right. to see the inside of that house. Yeah. Right. Um, and um, it, it's just a, again, well well run event and what i love about it is like there's like this big reveal the the houses are held in uh secret right until the very end you know um uh, so you sort of don't know what you're buying a ticket for right oh. until you um, get the ticket and uh and that makes it really interesting mm -hmm. uh in terms of what houses will be on the list and it's yeah. kind of a coveted list so um if if folks are interested in being on that list i would encourage you to contact the westboro women's club we'll make yeah. sure uh to get the address up on um, here on the screen um yeah. so we want to emphasize that this doesn't come with decorations you have to provide yeah. your own decorations yes you get, you, get, yeah. you get like a little card you know that you can go to home goods you know and and you know like a big <laughs> discount that, no 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 I, discount I, I bet not no. well or they can call me and i'd be happy to lend out some of the many <laughs> decorations i have in my basement from Perfect. That, or from that pod in the backyard that they've been right. hiding in the backyard right. these years right right <laughs> But it, once again, I think it really shows, I, I think it's clear from Ray that, you know, what you're talking about is a resilient organization. So they're going to be figuring it out. They're going to be yeah. figuring it out this year, right? Yeah. And, and, really and this year they have figured it out, right, Rini? I mean, so tell tell folks um, what you're doing in February. Well, you know, just to give a little background too, is that our, our meetings were being held each month, our general meetings at the Knights of Columbus. And... Um, that was just a great venue for us. Mm -hmm. And we, we were generally getting 50 to 60% of our membership uh, attending those meetings right, right throughout the entire year. Well, when everything ended in March last year, we had to stop. The last meeting we had in person was on March 10th, mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And we just got that one in. Right. And, um, you know, I think it was within a few days that the governor shut down everything. So we we did not meet after that. Our board continued to meet. Um, we met over Zoom. We had one Zoom meeting with the general membership after that. Um, but it, it wasn't, I'm not, you know, being the one who ran it, I would say it was not my most organized meeting because I was kind of flying by the seat of my pants um, as, as far as that goes. We only had about 25 or 30 people attend, and this is out of a membership of close to 100 people. Um, and I think it's because they weren't comfortable with Zoom yet. Right. You know, we, we were learning as we went. But over the summer, did a lot of self-teaching, figuring it out, and beginning in September, we have been holding our meetings via Zoom, and we have been trying to do everything that we would have done in person over Zoom. The only thing we can't do is have a shared luncheon or potluck supper, which is what we normally would do before a meeting, before the business of the meeting started. Um, we've, we have, I think we've gotten better and better with each month. Now, I know that there's an organization in Northboro of, of, mm -hmm. and they start their meeting and everybody is holding a cocktail <laughs> and they have a there's like a margarita toast that everybody. But I'm not sure that you necessarily want to incorporate that. But well, that might be a good idea. I'm just mentioning. I'm just mentioning. Now, yeah, now, I, Rini, as I had mentioned at the beginning of the show, one of my jobs is to provide comic relief. The other is to keep time. And I'm watching the time and I'm mm -hmm. saying to myself. Um, this has just been really interesting, but as a result, we're almost out of time. And I know mm -hmm. at the end of the show, Shelby, I always ask, yep. so is there something that folks need, because this is they're seeing us every week, is there something people should be knowing about over the next week that's a Westboro matter, right? Now you put on your little selectman hat. Sure. You should get a, a funny hat for this, you know, right? Good, your selectman's hat, so. Yeah, so I, I, I do... 
I do want to thank Rini. We'll make sure we put up on um, the club's contact information. Um, I want to actually not so much talk about uh, the um, what's coming up in Westboro as um, I want to call your attention to a slide Aiden's going to put up um, as we wrap up the show today. And that is we really want to hear from you. So we've talked about it in the past, but now we're going to give you some contact information. Arthur and I would love to hear if there are other topics about Westboro, people in Westboro you think should be featured. Um, We'd love to hear uh, your ideas. Um, it's a it's a fair amount of work to put a weekly show together. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we love doing it, um, but we also want to make sure that the content continues to stay relevant. So, um, hopefully, next show we'll have another update about our um, vaccines, right? Sort right. of as that progresses, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the uh, next show um, guest is. Uh, in the works right now. Mm -hmm. So, so, so working through a couple options. So thank you, Shelby. So thank you, Rini. This was really wonderful. It was, you know, it was a good, it was a great education for me in terms of what is, what is, what is going on. But once again, really speaks to the incredible glue, the many ways, the many places in which there is this glue that is just bringing that community together constantly. That's a really, and that's a really magic thing. And I, and I can see why the house tours really provide that also. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Rini. Thank you, Shelby, for doing this, you know, and for doing these, finding these great people. Folks, I hope you continue to enjoy the show. As Shelby has said, we're very, you know, we're really open to find, to talking to the people that you want to be meeting. And this is a great way to be meeting them. Mm -hmm. So we will, and we will see you all uh, in our next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.